Wrestling fans, the countdown is on to Boston Wrestling MWF's 20th anniversary bash Saturday night, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Join WWE Hall of Famers Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Bob Backlund, Marty Jannetty, the Doctor of Style Slick, the Berserker, Doink the Clown, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, Aldo Montoya, plus JTG of Crime Time, two-time Impact Wrestling World Champion Die Hard Eddie Edwards, John Cena Sr., and Oscar of Men on a Mission, for live wrestling, an autograph photo fan fest, VIP Q&A session with the kickoff to the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive in a must-see event two decades in the making. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live in Melrose November 13th. As we're running out of time here, Tony, I have to ask, when Pat Patterson was introduced as the new booker at this talent meeting, was it a good night for Steve Lombardi? I, I hear rumors, but yeah. I, I can't speak on, on I, I'd like to speak on things that I had some type of, uh, uh, some type of, 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 of being involved in some type you of You were way. not involved with that. In well, no that type, might be for the best. No, no, no type. That might be See, for the best. See, I always tell people that in wrestling, and probably it still is, yeah. it ain't changed. You have what you call clicks. Yeah. You have That clicks. was not your click. You would, if you're not in that clique, you don't know what's going on with that group, and they and they would pay you when you come around. And, and with me, and during that time, I was pretty much the only person that, that hung out with me in the whole time I've been with the WWF or WWE in my day was uh, Rene Goulet. You were friends with Rene? Yeah, well, I knew Goulet was one of, one of my trainers. Oh, okay. Because I first met when, when he was Sergeant Jacques uh, down at him and uh, he had a partner that later Down on. in Georgia? Yeah, but yeah. later his partner became uh, Ivan Koloff's partner, Smirnoff. Alexis Smirnoff. Yeah, but yeah. he was another person before he that. Had they they wore the yeah. French hat. Yeah. They were like French. Uh, he went from being a Frenchman to a Russian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I can't remember. George Duvall. Duvall. You should have said Mike the Duvall. You have to ask and, Robert uh, right. Purcell about that. Yeah, He's and then they, they wore yeah. the, the, the French hat that had the, yeah. the, the thing back in the back. When Goulet was around with one of the guys that ran the help church, they didn't have wrestling schools then. So what they would do, they would tr they would uh, stretch you yeah. for about six weeks. Yeah. So what they would do when they broke into wrestling all day, they bring it down to the wild or something, and they have yeah. a mat. Yeah. No ring, no, just a mat on a concrete floor. And then they would just pick you up and slam you and slam you and just beat the crap out of you. Then they would bring in what they call shooters. Now, a shooter is a person that was even a, like like a Iron Sheik or a Kurt Anger. You know, these guys was master at the, the sport of wrestling. Right. You know, like if you wrestle Kurt Anger, even though he's an old man and you know have a lot of injury, he could hook you. Yeah, he could hook you, and these and these hold and guys like Carl Gotch, who was fifty some years old, but could whoop anybody. Uh, Cosro Vizieri. Yeah, Cosro, the who Sheik, called Iron Sheik, and Bob Backler. These guys would call hookers or bone breakers, and they would put you in the matches with them. To learn the to learn the uh, learn the, the the trick of the trade, but you did not know what wrestling was all about. You wrestled. I wrestled for over six or eight weeks before I found out it was a work. They wouldn't tell you right away. Now guys know it's a work before they get in the ring. Yeah. They wanted to put me in the and I wrote this in my book. They want to put me in the ring to, to become. Uh, a, a champion. They were going to put the belt on me. Yeah. But then Paul Jones, who was a very popular wrestler along with Wahoo McDaniels and Rufus R. Jones in, in the Mid-Atlantic, they said, well, we know he can lift weights and we know he's got a great amateur background, but how will he do in a street fight? Do we know if he can street fight? So, <clears throat> Sweet House said, well, I got out there. He had a bar that they just called the ringside in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. And when I walked in, they had a Confederate flag on one side. They had a, <laughs> a, a, a Stonewall Jackson over here, and they had whoever there, and 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 Robert E. Lee on this side. So I knew where I was at, you know. And it was an old biker bar, so I walked in and had a little strip thing with a little table with a girl stripping and everything. Most horrible looking white girl I've ever seen in my life. You know, scampy looking. You wouldn't let them walk. Oh, she looked like scabs on a cattail. All right. But anyway, she came over. She sat down on my lap. And everything, and they, the public got to excuse my expression. I know I'm gonna get a lot of feedback for this, but I figure because I'm black, I can say it. 
So she said, nigga, keep your hand to yourself and slap me. And I go, what? I don't catch you. I don't fucking want to catch you. You got a disease or something. <laughs> so there was two guys playing pool. One guy laid his pool stick down, <laughs> laid the pool stick down, grabbed a pool ball off the table, held in his hand. So I'm watching the two guys come from the table, walking toward One had a pool stick. One had a pool ball in his hand. The, some guy came from the bar, came up behind me, and just sucker punched. I mean, he will hit me right in my freaking ear. And I hear little bells and stuff. So I'm scared to death. I get up, and I'm starting swinging. I'm fighting, swinging, throwing people against the wall, everything. Finally, I see the door. I make it through the door. Sweet Hamster was standing there with his arm folded. and go, hey, that's pretty good, kid. Then he walked around and gave all three people money. He paid them to jump me to see if I could fight. They if had, they they, the well, they used to have what they call hazing. Yeah. That's why so many people got so pissed off at when Hogan got the belt because they figured that in his short term yeah. that, that he got that he could not he had not earned the he didn't earn the spot. The respect and of the boys could, first. Uh, there you go. He couldn't. See, he wasn't a hooker. Right. See, a, a wrestler, another man putting over somebody that they know could beat him anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know, if, 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 it's, it's very hard to lay down for a person that you know you can mop up the floor with. Like, I give Mark Henry a lot of credit. There's no freaking, and Big Show, there's no freaking way in the world that Vince could have walked up to Andre the Giant and said, Andre, why want you to put over Law Littlebrook? Like he asked Mark Henry to do with Hogswallow. Yeah. Like like he had Big Show to do with Stone Cold. If if Stone Cold had faced Andre and Vince told him to put Stone Cold Steve Austin over, Andre would have picked up Stone Cold, threw him in the freaking third war row. Hogan was scared to death. You could talk to him yourself because you figure Andre was going to change his mind about t passing the torch. Yeah. WrestleMania you know, three. Cause yeah. It happened a lot of times. It happened. It happened with me. Got Vince would tell me to lose to somebody. I tell people go look at him, look at the match of yourself. With me, Savage, armed off all these guys. I beat the crap out of them, and then I lay down. You get your stuff. But in. right, but I know I let the people know this guy can't not. You're not beat some jobber. Yeah, this guy cannot beat me in real life. That's what kept SD and Jones alive. People didn't realize SD was a very strong, big, thick. Allen boy, SD could bench press 450 pounds. Even though he was a jobber and enhancement he, talent at he, the end, he had credibility. Because he the, had credibility. He, he would not, you're right, he would not lay down for you. Right. You watch his matches, SD always won the fight, but lost the war. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore, and we need you to join our family every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw. It's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey Through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021.